Okay, so part of me wants to do this real talk while making my bed, but I'm kind of nervous to do so because I don't want everybody to like see how I live. <laughs> Not in a bad way, just like in a, I don't know, like I don't want people to stalk me. Anyway, welcome. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Exus and what do I do? Stop asking me that because we're gonna find out together, okay? Today is a real talk Wednesday day. So I'm gonna just talk about things that are on my mind. And what am I gonna talk about today is that I feel like YouTube and social media in general is just the new tabloid. Like this has been something that has been on my mind for a while, especially when it comes to uh, the urge to cancel a celebrity or a well-known content creator. I kind of got this idea from FD Signifier's last video talking about the left and just like the drama that circumferences the left. And personally, I agree with every single thing that he had said about the, the YouTube left, the content creator left, just being a cesspool of drama that is incredibly exhausting to keep up with. At some point, you're just like, um, and, and sometimes it just be drama that you really don't care about, right? Like. Ooh, do I want to go there? I do believe that there is a big drama problem just on YouTube in general, not just with the left, but just in general, like the internet right now with social media and the influx of cancel culture and accountability and all of that is just a very big cesspool for tabloidism and wanting to shame somebody. Then you are actively going after these influencers and these content creators, especially the small ones who have a decent enough following but really can't buy their way out of you know public shame it's very hard for them to kind of get their footing after a really harsh canceling. Lindsay Ellis was canceled on Twitter and she left YouTube and Twitter. My main concern is not and not in Lindsay Ellis's defense I think she makes really great content but not in her defense but I just think it's very very interesting how we will sit here and drag smaller content creators and take our fan bases and put them against other content creators for, I don't know, content? <laughs> Basically, it's like we're all just attacking each other for content, you know? And it's just very interesting because it reminds me a lot of the early 2000s when we would go out of our way to theoretically cancel a lot of these celebrities. We would go and we would cancel um, Britney for driving in a car with her baby. We would cancel Mary-Kate and Ashley for not eating enough. We would cancel Raven Simone for not losing enough weight. We were, we were canceling Lindsay Lohan for being an impressionable teenager in Hollywood, making a lot of money and doing what impressionable teenagers in Hollywood do. And we would cast all this shame on them. And they're not the only ones. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other celebrities out there who have gotten an influx of shame for just existing. Um, and I just find it so weird and so like, fascinating how it shifted from all this public shame to these celebrities, right? These celebrities who have money and resources to control that to all of a sudden shifting that public shame to these smaller creators who don't nearly have as much resources and money as these bigger celebrities do. In no way, shape, or form am I saying that if a smaller content creator does something questionable or problematic, should we not call it a sh Dang it, I, just, I used a, a, a buzzword. I used a buzzword. Said I wasn't gonna use one this year. Troublesome. We definitely wanna call them out, but I'm also saying that it's just very weird how we can gang pile on somebody and ultimately affect their career in general, especially the smaller that they are. A really good example of this. And I said I wasn't gonna say anything about them, but I, I, I feel like I have to. But are y'all aware of the art commentary community? Yeah. <laughs> see, for those of you guys who don't know what the art commentary community is, it is an incredibly niche community that did get traction when creep show art was like really popular on YouTube and then inevitably got 
canceled, rightfully so, or held accountable because of questionable behaviors on the internet stalking other content creators. But they basically will make commentary on whatever they feel they want to. They do this in the guise of hiding behind an anime OC do not steal avatar, which I love, okay? Holy cow, I have to go to the bathroom. I have been holding it. Hold on one second. There was a time where it would make me sick smelling candles. Like I'd have really bad breathing problems smelling candles. So now I don't regret taking a nice big whiff of a candle, my loves. <sighs> Did you also know? Did you guys also know that a synonym for the word problematic is moot? Instead of saying problematic, I could just say moot. When an influencer is being rather moot. Yeah, so ACC, as I was saying, you know, I feel like a lot, a lot of commentators today, like the Red Opinion and the Illuminati, they might have taken some influence from the ACC and using like a little avatar to kind of like stand in as a little character speaking about all the um, commentary that they might have. However, the ACC specifically is known very well for doing this. But what I find very interesting about the ACC itself is that they're kind of immature. <laughs> Not only are they immature, but a lot of the drama that happens between most of them, drama where you'd be like, okay, like, could this be settled in the DMs? And so I think it's a really good example of like, tabloid culture on the internet because what they're notorious for doing is talking about each other and making full-fledged videos about each other and so i just find it really really interesting how they'll just make very long videos just dragging each other about scenarios and situations that absolutely nobody knows outside of their own community of course bigger content creators like shane dawson and and jeffree star tana tana monfart i don't know all these other big influencers who do really problematic moot things who do moot things i'm using that word so wrong so they get dragged and called out for it rightfully so but what i noticed the acc do is that they're literally out here accusing and exposing their contemporaries who do not have nearly as much influence as someone like a Jeffree Star or a Shane Dawson. And I just find it crazy. It, it just makes me think like, these are people behind microphones accusing other regular people of situations that nobody really knows anything about. For somebody to make a whole video trying to expose you for something that you didn't even know you did wrong or some some argument that you got into or because Sparkle Dog 97 thought that anime boobies 59 couldn't draw or something i don't know and then just make a whole video on it is weird with the creep show heart debacle i mean they were notorious for doing this especially what, what was their name peach peachykins i forgot their name it was peach something i'll write it in here but like it, exposing them and making them feel as if they have been affecting the entire community from their opinions on the community in general, general opinions they had from the community as an onlooker. I think Creepshow accused them of being a suicide baiter, which, tell me you're a performative white liberal without telling me you're a performative white liberal. Literally all of her crap, like, like she, it felt like Tumblr, right? In like 2017. Like, that's what it felt like Tilly with Creepshow, right? And I just found it so interesting how they just dismantled this whole individual's livelihood on the internet based off of lies and a misunderstanding. The accusers of them, they even admitted to like not even caring about the trauma anymore. <laughs> to bring it full circle, I feel like the left does in fact do that a lot. The left side of the internet on YouTube or on Twitter, they, they really do be dragging and canceling their own because their faves basically tell them to. And I also feel like I don't know, like we, we don't hold a lot of grace for regular, regular people. Again, I'm not out here telling you to hold grace for somebody who's out here using slurs or who's out here doing questionable practices, but I'm also not gonna sit here and tell you to drag someone 
with like a thousand subscribers because they had a misunderstanding on a social political conversation. They hold no influence, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know, it's just weird, but that's just something that's been on my mind that I've been thinking about. So, I don't know, tell me what you think. Do you think YouTube's a new tabloid culture? Because I sure do. Yeah, it is, it is. It's unfortunate. Cause you, you always have to think about like the individuals who can afford to get themselves uncanceled and then the individuals who can't afford to get themselves uncanceled. They ha they spend their whole livelihood on YouTube and it's completely dismantled in less than a day because they can't afford to get themselves uncanceled, especially if it's for like a big misunderstanding. The whole ACC thing with uh, Creep Show and Peach Fuzz, I, I forgot their name. I remember watching a four hour retrospective on how messed up the ACC was. And by the time I got done watching that four hour retrospective, I couldn't even remember what Peach did. I had to watch that four hour retrospective like three times over in order to remember what Peach did. And I still don't. <laughs> I don't know, child. Anyways, that's my whole video on um, tabloid culture in the internet community. Tell me what you think. Do you think the internet's a new tabloid or do you think that the internet is has always been this way? Mm. Tell me what you think. <laughs> um, I gotta finish making my bed and cleaning my sheets. Cleaning sheets is annoying. Anyway, goodbye guys. Oh, wait, wait, drink water. All right, now goodbye. See ya.